I'm Laura Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle from a very busy Washington tonight, so let's get right to it. The true extremist threat. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Oh, at the end of his speech today, I don't know if you saw it at the White House, Biden ended on a note that was, it was sweet. It, it was hopeful. It was unifying. There's simply nothing, nothing beyond our capacity to get done if we do it together. So God bless you all and pray that we come figure out how to come together better than we have so far, because a lot of people's lives and futures depend upon it. If you actually believe that, then you're just as naive as one of those poor rejected girls on The Bachelor. <laughs> I'll never stop fighting for you. I know you didn't. I know you didn't. Rachel, I know you didn't. You're going to put me in this car right now. And it could be the biggest mistake. It is. I promise you it is. The truth about this administration and the Democrat Party in general, it, it's not funny at all. In fact, it's dark and it's sinister. While they've been busy destroying our prosperity, our border, and our safety, they've also been working overtime to sell a lie to the American people. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Every single American should stand in opposition against these radical MAGA Republican views. This MAGA Republican agenda is an effort to disrupt our democracy. It is sort of a big reveal of the rot and, frankly, the danger of the modern GOP. Now, this toxic mantra, it's all silly. It's drilled into the national conversation day after day, and it pits Americans against Americans, solely based on political differences. Now, how sickeningly cynical is that? How transparent? The argument that conservative Republicans are the most dangerous threat facing us today, not the crippling recession, not fentanyl coming from China, not high energy costs, not skyrocketing murder rates, but those people who supported Trump, they're the real menace. Now, this is why Biden can't quit Charlottesville. Their veins bulging. The veins bulging on their, as they were screaming. Literally coming out of the fields carrying torches with swastikas. Those folks coming out of that field down in Virginia carrying swastikas and torches, chanting the same anti-Semitic bile that was chanted in Germany in the early 30s. Chanting the same anti-Semitic bile heard across Europe in the 30s. And then there's the insurrection that wasn't. Whenever the news gets bad politically for Biden, the Democrats and the media try to save the party by going back to Jan 6th. We will be presenting um, new information, new evidence uh, to the American people um, because the investigation goes on. I, I promise you it will be uh, interesting for people who have followed it uh, up until now. And hey, um, in a democracy, the people have the right to uh, knowledge about what's taking place with their government. I think it'll be uh, potentially more sweeping than some of the other hearings. Uh, so I think it will be, as the others, uh, hearing worth watching. Okay, you want to know the new information? Today, the Dow dropped for the sixth straight day. Trillions of dollars of wealth have been wiped away, and it increasingly looks bad for the Democrats in the midterms. Now, Sunday's Washington Post ABC News poll shows that Democrats are getting killed on the issues that the voters care most about, the economy and crime. Among registered voters, Republicans have a 17-point advantage on trust on how to handle the economy, an 18-point advantage on inflation, and a 22-point advantage on handling crime. It's not enough, though, that they've whipped themselves, the Democrats, into a panic. They're now whipping their activism, their activists, into true violent extremism over cultural issues like abortion. Yeah, I'm talking about the same people who insist, right, that President Trump incited the Capitol riot with his words on January 6th. They now sound pretty close to incitement themselves. We are at war with these people. These folks are evil. They have allowed evil into their house with Donald Trump. The MAGA movement is a threat. This is an outright attack on women in this country. This is a um, literally call to arms in our country. Maybe now it is all about the violence. It all is about an insurrection. It all is, in, in his mind, about a civil war. 
Now their message is being received loud and clear. Stop the pro-life movement by any means necessary. Stop the parents who are outraged about trans propaganda at schools by any means necessary. And our vice president, she seems to think that people who pray outside of abortion clinics or who volunteer at crisis pregnancy centers, that they're evil incarnate. So-called extremist leaders are passing laws to criminalize these folks, passing laws to punish women. I met with many of you in my office at the White House, and we discussed the innovative strategies that you have used to defend women's reproductive freedom. You are taking on, rightly, the crisis pregnancy centers. Taking them on? Is that what she said? Now, how tone deaf. Kamala gave those inflammatory remarks just a week after yet another crisis pregnancy center was vandalized with threatening messages. It was the second attack on that same center. They're trying to do to pro-life volunteers, I think, what they've tried to do with Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett. They're trying to intimidate them and scare them. They have zero respect for the decorum or even the houses of worship where people go pray. Because yesterday, these same type of activists took their vile rants to New York's St. Patrick's Cathedral. And even the FBI is getting in on the act, charging a pro-life volunteer and a father of seven, Mark Houck, with a federal crime. Now, for what? A nothing skirmish outside an abortion clinic that was entirely provoked by a left-wing activist. Now, this is perhaps the most despicable action taken by the FBI next to the vindictive, disproportionate prosecutions of some of the January 6th defendants. And it speaks both to the politicized nature of our own DOJ and the desperation of the Democrats. Now, the Angles saw this coming with the left's role in encouraging and even rewarding the depraved behavior of the summer of 2020. The Democrats' message to their base at the time was, keep it up, hold on to that energy, because they wanted to harness that emotion toward a political victory over Trump and the Republicans. For Democrats, the dozens of lives lost, the police officers unfairly targeted, and the property losses incurred by cities across the country, that was all collateral damage for the greater good. It was all, though, a power grab. But now, Democrats see that that power is threatened. The voters didn't bargain for any of what they're suffering through right now. And rather than reassessing their policies, maybe tacking to the middle a little bit, Liberals in the Democrat Party are growing more vicious by the minute. They're even attacking one of their own. One minute, they suck up to Joe Manchin for the climate change deal. The next, they trash him. And now they're doing the same thing with Kirsten Sinema, hitting her for the crime of occasionally thinking for herself and actually once in a while talking to a Republican. The only person who seems to like her is Mitch McConnell. <laughs> and Mitch McConnell likes her because she works with him to obstruct the Democrats. She does not help the Democrats. We don't need her. We need a strong Democrat in Arizona like um, Mark, Mark, Kelly. No, Mark Kelly. Joy, why don't you move there and run? And we're supposed to believe, after listening to stuff like that, that they actually care about women. Not women who dare question their twisted orthodoxy. They don't count. But the gals, though, on The View, I think they are good for one thing, for reminding us that today's feminists are the real male chauvinists. Yeah, you're witnessing a full-fledged Democrat meltdown happening. They don't care about preventing violence and ever have. They don't care about saving democracy, and they never did, or preserving respect for our government institutions. They are so consumed by hatred for the 74 million Americans who voted for Donald Trump that they're willing to compromise all that they once believed in, including the right to free speech and impartial justice, in order to punish those same Trump supporters. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call dangerous extremism. But Democrats, they're the ones who will be punished less than six weeks from now when the voters finally have their say.
And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.